everyone from around the world. Awesome to see how many people are here for their first CMX event. It's it's a very unique one. Uh, very, very unique one from all of our other CMX events. Uh, this was definitely the shortest commute to the stage I've ever had. I may or may not have woken up about 35 minutes ago, taken a shower, sat down, and here I am on stage. That's that's pretty impressive. If you hear dinging around, that's because my cat is here. He wants to be a part of this show as well. Uh, and it's going to be a bit of a unique event. We've uh, asked all of our speakers for this entire event to not get haircuts for the last six weeks. So everyone's going to be looking real cool. Uh, we've made it optional, pants, no pants, sweatpants, shorts, whatever they want to wear. Uh, it's it's cool. And we've also told them they're free to invite their kids and their dogs on stage at any point during their time. Um, a, a unique CMX event. Um, but seriously, everyone is going to be doing their absolute best to be putting on uh, an amazing show and great sessions and keep it professional. But everyone's doing this from home because we're all in quarantine. So, uh, you know, there might be some technical difficulties if uh, someone's Wi-Fi goes out because it's foggy where they are or if their kids jump in to the screen. Uh, we're just going to roll with the punches. We're all going to have fun. And we're going to hopefully make an event that feels a lot like a real event for all of you. Um, uh, Beth and Emery did an incredible job. I'll talk a little bit about how this event came to be, but we really want this event to feel like not just you watching us. Um, we want you to be talking to each other. We have lots of discussion groups planned, uh, smaller sessions, uh, yoga classes, mixology classes, a DJ, just really trying to bring different kinds of experiences to the event. <laughs> Where's the cat? I am not picking up my cat. When I pick up my cat, he tries to kill me. It never goes well. My wife can pick up the cat. I cannot pick up the cat. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's dive in. All right. So today we're going to be talking about, I'm going to kind of just kick off this event, uh, give you a quick welcome, tell you about what to expect. And, and then we're going to talk about the new normal how COVID-19 is impacting community strategies, what we're seeing, and kind of frame up what you can expect in the rest of the event from the other speakers and kinds of content that we're gonna bring here. All right, so first, welcome to CMS Global Connect 2020. This is the first event of its kind. Um, we've hosted 10 in-person conferences. Our last one was in Redwood City. We had over a thousand people there. Um, we have local chapters all over the world and over 60 chapters that are all run by members of the community, many of whom you'll see uh, participate in this event, uh, running interviews, giving sessions. Um, it's an incredible program. They're still running all these events virtually. So I think we have over 25 events going this month and, and those are continuing to run. And so events are a, a core to CMX and the CMX community experience. Um, and so this is our first time doing one at this scale. We've done lots of virtual events with, you know, even 300, 400 people. Um, but we're, we're, we're going to have about 3,000 people at this event in total. And so it's, uh, it's a pretty spectacular challenge. Um, and, uh, you know, it came together very quickly. So we organized this whole event in five weeks. Um, Anne-Marie and Beth here on Slack, uh, this is when the idea was first born. Uh, we're, we're kind of figuring out what is our contingency, contingency plan and what are we going to do about CMX Summit this year? And um, and we came up with the idea, well, we are trying to figure out how to do virtual conferences. Um, everyone in our community is trying to figure out how to adapt to this new normal, how to, how to build virtual community, build virtual events. While we organize a community, rally all of our local organizers and put together uh, a big global event um, that can kind of help us all navigate through it. And because it's kind of, we're in crisis mode. We wanted to move really quickly. So this whole event was put together by Anne-Marie and Beth in five weeks. Um, they, they did an incredible amount of work to put this together, to curate the speakers, to curate the sessions, to explore different vendors. 
um, to just make it a really, really high quality event. And so we're going to learn a ton from this event. Uh, we can't wait to hear all of your feedback about it. Um, this is going to help us continue to innovate and, and make our events better. And, and as we are certainly going to be organizing more virtual events and virtual conferences, um, this is a huge stepping stone for us. Um, so why are we here? Uh, well, uh, everyone who's here is in some way thinking about community in the context of coronavirus and where we are today. Um, some people have lost jobs. Some people ha jobs have become 10 times busier. Our communities are all dealing with this struggle in their own way, right? This is uh, the first time in me in at least modern history, that the entire globe, everyone on the globe is experiencing uh, the same kind of struggle at the same time. And so all every single one of our communities is dealing with this in some way, and we're all trying to navigate this. And so what we wanted to do was bring together this event so that you can learn uh, from each other and learn from some of the top experts in the world on everything from virtual events to practicing self-care during this time, which I'll talk about really critical, to um, to uh, pivoting to your, your offline, to online, um, how do you build inclusive communities when, when you're focused solely on virtual. Um, so lots of big questions that I think a lot of us share, and we wanted to gather all of those kinds of answers and insights here, while also giving you that space to discuss it with each other and get that support that you need. Um, some quick guidelines for this session and for the entire event um, that will help make the whole experience much more real and much more valuable for you. Um, so first off, close out your other tabs. Um, you know, I, I think in general, in life, it's really important to focus on one thing at a time. Um, it's very easy to go to a virtual event and feel like, well, I can do that while also answering email and also answering Slack and also getting this other job done. And I promise you, I have a lot of experience with this. You're not going to get any email done. You're not going to get any Slack done. You're not going to get that project done. And you're not going to pay attention in this event if you don't focus on it. So I'd recommend really finding what are the sessions, what are the experiences that you do want to participate in, and be here, be here fully for those ones. Um, and, and close out all your other tabs, close out distractions, be there fully for that session, and then go back to your work after that's done. Two, participate, um, say hello in the chat, uh, discuss with each other, get involved. Uh, this is an event with lots of opportunities to um, to not just be listening to speakers, but to also be participating. Um, be present, again, close out your other tabs, be here, be with us, be with the discussion groups, have your video on um, so, so that you can actually be a part of it. Follow the CMX code of conduct, conduct, which you can find at cmxhub.com slash code dash of dash conduct. Um, the same rules apply here that apply offline, be respectful of each other, um, support each other, no personal attacks. Um, and if you do have any issues, just get in touch with our team, team at cmxhub.com. Uh, five, get comfortable. Um, you know, we're going to be here all day. So make sure you're in a comfortable spot, get up, take uh, and also take breaks, take walks, stretch, do what you need to do. Um, grab yourself some snacks and drinks throughout the day. Um, fun to watch or participate in these discussions and, and just have your favorite snack or uh, iced tea or whatever you like to drink. And finally, have fun. Um, this is an opportunity maybe a little bit to, uh, to escape. Uh, we've all been kind of holed up in our homes quite a lot. Um, over the past couple months, and this is an opportunity to kind of let loose a little bit, be silly, go to the DJ session, learn, go to mixology class, um, have fun, learn, share with your team what you're learning. Uh, look at this as if you were going to a real event. And for today, it's it's a little bit of a, a different environment, surrounded by people, your peers, by people that you know, and um, have fun with it. All right. So uh, let's kind of talk about where the community has been before COVID-19 so we kind of understand where there are opportunities and what things look like before this whole crisis, right? So first off, um, this this really big stat came out of First Rounds Capital uh, 2019 uh, State of Startups Review. 
I said that 80% of startups are investing in building a customer community. And so, um, and 28% said that it was their moat and critical to the success of their community. So this is massive. Um, obviously, we've done a ton of research at CMX uh, on how businesses are investing in community, which I'll share. But to see this come from a really well-established VC fund, uh, this this survey is taken by thousands and thousands of startups. And when you think startup, you might be thinking small, but the startups who fill this out are valued at over $100 million sometimes and beyond. So companies at all different sizes and stages are investing very, very heavily in building customer communities. Um, we, we found this in our research, community becoming a critical part of every business. So um, over 80%, 88% said community is critical to our community mission. Over 80% said community is a positive impact on organization's objectives over the last 12 months. And um, over 80%, uh, or almost 80% said, I have seen increased interest from com in community from other departments in the last 12 months. And, um, and over 60% said they plan on inv increasing their investment in community over the next year. Um, this is all before coronavirus. This is um, at the end of 2019. And so uh, a lot of investment going into community. Um, and what we're seeing is that most of the communities, most of the companies who are investing in community are really, they're already focused on scale. So they're not just experimenting. 22% um, were building a new community. About 10% were focused on revitalizing an old community. But over uh, about 60% were focused on scaling an existing community. So we're seeing an industry that's growing a lot, that's growing in investment, and, and across the board, companies are really looking at scaling up their community programs. Um, and again, before coronavirus, about 60% of community programs were both online and offline. 38% um, were digital only, um, and 4% were, uh, were offline only. Of course, right now it's 100% or digital only. Um, it's it's a massive shift. So so that means six, at least 60% based on this study um, of companies are are having to completely adapt their strategy right now because offline was a critical piece of that. Um, and so uh, we're trying to figure out how we can all have this kind of asynchronous connection, just like we are in this event. Um, how can we uh, continue to have these experiences and bring everyone together? Um, and I'm curious to hear from you as well. Type in the chat, uh, were you doing online, were you doing offline, or were you doing both before coronavirus? Um, just so you can kind of see, even here at this event, what everyone else has been doing. Were you doing online, offline, or both? And so, um, I, you know, this is, this is gonna be one of the key shifts that we're seeing happen right now. Um, and community has been fundamentally shifting how businesses function. Um, I, I want to kind of help frame up what it means when we talk about community, um, because even people who have been in this industry for 10 years sometimes really struggle to articulate what, what does it mean for business to be building community? How, are, how is it different from other communities out there? Um, and how is it impacting how businesses function? Um, and I believe it's been fundamentally shifting how business functions. Like, if you are investing deeply in community, it's not just like another channel for growth. It is actually changing how you create value. All right. So community is essentially, it's an extension of your team and an amplifier of impact. So if you have a team with a certain amount of bandwidth to create a certain amount of value, if you build community around that team, you can actually amplify impact and you can extend the ability of the team. All right, so um, let me explain. So to build an audience, you help people, right? You create content, you create value, you do anything you can to help people. And so they start following you because you help them and you continue to help them. Audience grows, they're all listening to you, great. So to build an audience, help people. To build a community, you want to help people help each other, okay? So you uh, aren't just helping people. You're creating opportunities and spaces for people to help each other. So that's the difference between audience, building audience and building community. Audience, help people. Community, help people help each other. 
And now when you help people help each other, what they're doing is creating value for each other. And that can be value that you as a company have been trying to do all on your own before. All right, so customer success. Customer success is essentially teaching your customers how to be successful, how to use your product, how to advance in their career, how to be successful in their work, all right? Community-driven customer success means helping customers teach each other. So you're empowering your community members, your experts to create classes, to create content, to facilitate discussion groups and events, to do, to do the things that you as a company had to do. You're empowering your community to do that for each other. And as a result, you can actually have that impact at exponential scale. Because if you have a two-person customer success team, you can only do what their limited bandwidth allows you to do. But if you have a two-person customer success team and you have 100 experts that you've empowered from your community to create content, the reach, the value, the scale of the, the impact that you're having, it's, it's much, much larger. Same for marketing. Let's look at field marketing, right? Running events and, and having that kind of uh, on the ground marketing initiatives, you have a, a field marketing team. What do they do? They host events for customers and create these kinds of experiences for people to come together and engage. Community powered field marketing, that's empowering community members to host events for each other and host experiences for each other. So again, if you had two people um, on your field marketing team and their job was to facilitate events and experiences, how many can they possibly do? Now take those same two people, but instead of doing it all themselves, they're empowering a community of advocates and ambassadors of people who are passionate about the brand to self-organize events and self-organize experiences. Now the actual impact that they can have, the amount of customers and prospects and leads and everybody that they can reach, the amount of community experiences they can create is exponentially increased. And I'll even share a couple examples in a minute of companies who are doing this in real life. But the idea is by empowering, a, by building a community and empowering people to run with what you're doing, uh, you, you create this amazing opportunity to scale exponentially. So business at its core is creating value for people, right? That's what you do as a business. You create value for people. Um, that value comes in the form of product. It comes in the form of customer success. It comes in the form of marketing and content you create and customer support. Uh, and all the things that you do to make your customers happy, business equals creating value for people. All right, that's what we do as a business. Now, community building is empowering people to create value for each other. Okay, so... This is how community building is fundamentally shifting the way that businesses function. It's not just us as a business has to create all the value for everyone else. It's saying we as a business are going to create a movement. We're going to build a community. We're going to activate people, engage them, and give them the opportunity to contribute, to create value for each other. And as a result, the companies who are becoming community driven, who are investing heavily in community, are scaling a lot faster than companies who are only relying solely on the, the traditional forms of business, of traditional forms of marketing, of traditional forms of customer support. They're just not going to be able to reach this scale that a, a company that is investing heavily in community will be able to. And that, that's the output of, of the community, of them contributing in those ways. That's not even talking about just all the other benefits that come from building community, giving people a sense of belonging, and the kind of loyalty that that drives, the kind of passion that that drives, the kind of engagement and, and meaningfulness that it brings to your business. So your business isn't just about build, uh, growing profit. It's also about helping people and having a meaningful impact on their lives and on the world. And so great examples of this, Duolingo, one of my favorite examples, they have 300 million active users on their app, which teaches people languages. They have over 80 courses and almost all of their courses, except for I think three, uh, have been developed by the community. So again, there's no way they could have created all of those courses by hiring all those language learning experts, by 
by uh, hiring all these editors. There's no way they would have been able to do it at this scale, especially at their earlier stages as a business. And so they empower the community and now they have many, many, many more courses than Rosetta Stone or any of the other language learning platforms. They're also running, they were running 2,500 events a month and now they're switching, um, uh, like everyone else are thinking about virtual experiences, but 2,500 events a month and that was with a team of three people on the community team, three people. And they had 2,500 events being run per month. I think it was even, I think it got up to 2,600, it was growing. Every month it was even a bigger number. And it's because they empower their community to self-organize events. Now, could they have done that if they organized them all themselves? Absolutely not. Uh, on the B2B side, we have Salesforce, another great example. They run their, their support forums, which has millions of users. 84% of all the questions on there are answered by members of the community. Um, they have a thousand local chapters organized by their community. And they have 170,000 attendees at Dreamforce, which Dreamforce itself was a platform where they empowered all of their partners, all of their customers to self-organize events and experiences that made it such a massive production. So there was already an unprecedented responsibility and opportunity for businesses to build community. Now we have coronavirus um, and it, it's changed everything that we know about community, about how we connect. Everyone is socially isolated. Um, are we emotionally isolated from each other? I don't know. Uh, people are connecting in really new and creative ways and uh, getting in touch with friends and family in new ways, spending more time with their family at home. It, I mean, we've never seen anything like this. The way it's changing our social dynamics is, is profound. Um, but how is it impacting community strategies and what will the future look like? Uh, how can you start adapting your strategies? Um, so I'm going to go through quickly just, just five things that we're seeing um, that you can plan for and, and how to adapt uh, your community strategies and, and skate to where the puck is going in the long run. All right. Um, how will things be changing in this post-COVID world? Um, so one, um, I think smaller events will return. There will be hesitancy, but they will return. There are not going to be conferences in 2020 and and possibly because there's a typo in here <laughs> uh there's probably not going to be conferences in 2021 or you can see a very good argument um if the virus does come back in the winter uh in the fall and winter like many expect um that's gonna set things back um to run a conference successfully you need to have time to market it and promote it and obviously no one can promote an event right now um and they have no idea when it's going to exist uh, again um, and, you know, I mean, even when we start opening up, we're already seeing how states are slowly starting to open up and, you know, the, the time it will take for us to be allowed to have big events is, is just, that's going to be the last step, right? That's going to be the last piece. Everything else is going to open up and then they'll say, okay, we can have big sporting events and big parades and big conferences again. And so and when you're thinking about conferences, you really need to be leaning into virtual a lot more right now and and just keep an eye out as things open up you may be able to do small thoughtful controlled safe small events and that can be that that can be actually really valuable i think people are going to be craving that as long as you take the right precautions but 2020 it's kind of a wash 2021 i'll just proceed with caution virtual events are here to stay. Um, I actually think people were sleeping on virtual events before. I know a few companies that actually switched over all their in-person to virtual events way before this ever happened, like years ago, because virtual events, as we're finding now, actually have a lot of benefits. I can roll out of bed and speak. You can roll out of bed and watch me. Uh, it's, it's free or cheap, so it's much more accessible for a lot of people. Um, you can drive really large numbers. There's no limitations of stage space. So for companies that are trying to drive leads, that are trying to drive growth, that are trying to have simple ways to bring their community together consistently, virtual events are actually a really, really awesome, powerful experience. It's not going to replace in-person. It's not the same as in-person. There's a lot of things that lacks from in-person. But when things do return to any sort of new normal, I think what we're going to see is that hybrid approach. We're going to see companies doing both in-person 
and virtual events. So if you're worried about, ah, oh, we're going to do all these virtual events now, and then we're just going to have hosted, or what's one creative event that you've been to, um, share that in the chat, because I think you'll already see just in this community, there's already a lot of creative things happening that aren't just people watching a video or in a group discussion video, but different kinds of experiences, different ways of connecting um, synchronously at the same time. So I'm not talking about forums and groups or Slack. I'm talking about synchronously at the same time. What are the different ways that we can connect with other humans and experience each other? Um, so you'll start to get creative and I think you'll start to see different tools and technology be developed um, in order to create these kinds of unique experiences that aren't just your traditional Zoom format, which already feels kind of like a phone call, very commonplace. For there's going to be an increased attention on the ROI of community. Um, the economy is going to continue to take a hit. I don't know what the hell is happening in the stock market right now. Uh, I'm not good at that stuff. I obviously don't get it because it's going up uh, somehow. But um, you know, on the enterprise side, on startups, in private companies, you're seeing um, everyone's really you know tightening the purse rings right now. They are not spending a lot of money. Uh, we've unfortunately seen some some layoffs. Um, and so what we're gonna see across the board is community is becoming more important, but the focus on ROI of community is gonna be even stronger. And it, it was strong before, and we've been preaching this before, but now it's it's like, you're not going to be able to get by if you're just relying on community being this thing that feels good and people just believe in being important. Um, it's going to be extremely important that you're able to say, yes, this is important. Yes, this is bringing meaningful value to people. And I have the data to show directly how this is impacting our business. Um, actually, uh, we're, we're working on a course right now that will kind of teach you everything you need to know about how to build community for a business. Uh, it's kind of like a community MBA. Um, and that's what you need. You need to think about yourself not just as a community builder, but as a, as a business person who can show the data on how you're impacting growth, how you're impacting support, how you're impacting customer success, um, and be able to say, we are valuable and critical to this business. And, and you should be investing more money into us rather than making budget cuts. And, and, and if we're able to do that, I, I really truly believe this is a time that community teams become a core part of every business. Um, it, it's, this crisis has shown a very strong light on the value of community, on the value of virtual community, especially companies that didn't have a virtual community or space set up, they're scrambling to figure it out. Every community platform I've spoken to is getting a ton of inbound demand right now because you, they, they, the companies that had this in place had a place to kind of all their community and customers to come together, their customers to rally, to support each other, for the business to be able to communicate with them consistently. Um, having a community is an extremely defensible asset in a crisis like this. It, it sets companies apart from everyone else and allows them to weather storms like this. Um, and so I think this experience Community, like I said, everyone was already investing in it. They already saw the opportunity, but I think this will really make it clear that it's not even an option. Uh, the future of business will include community in a very clear and critical way. It's up to us as community teams and business leaders to make sure that we do it in the right way, that it's built with the value to the business and the value to the member in mind. But I think, I think is, this is only gonna get more and more important. All right, so I'll leave you with three things to focus on as you go into the next few months and as you go into the rest of this event. Um, one is self-care. Uh, we have a couple talks on self-care during this event. I highly recommend going to it. There, us as If you're here and you're a community builder and you're like me, um, you're always trying to think about how do you help other people? How do you be there for your community? How do you keep supporting everyone else? I know when this crisis first hit, I was like, writing content and creating videos and organizing events and discussion groups and trying to help people get jobs. And I, I almost burned out within the first week of coronavirus. 
Um, and then I ended up taking a week off and was able to invest in myself and reset into the new normal and and come back with a, a full cup um, to be able to continue invest in in doing these great things. You can't help other people if you don't help yourself first. So put your mask on first, which takes on a whole new meeting right now. But take care of yourself, invest in yourself, make sure you're good so that you can help other people. Because if you burn out, you're not gonna be able to help your community through this crisis. Two, lean into virtual. It doesn't have to be a big conference like this. Just start doing discussion groups, start doing um, small gatherings, start doing anything you can to just lean into these virtual synchronous experiences to complement your asynchronous groups and, and forums. Um, because this is what people need right now, and, and there's a ton of demand for it. So really lean into it. Um, and three, continue to focus on that business impact. If you're not familiar with the space model, um, Google space model, S-P-A-C-E. It's a, a great model we have that will help you figure out the business impact of your community. Um, but focus on business impact to make sure that this isn't just uh, – you know, flash in the pan for you and your company, that community becomes a mainstay in your organization. And we have lots of talks in this whole event about doing these things, about running your virtual events, building inclusive events, business impact, practicing self-care. We kind of shape this whole event around uh, these are three of the core themes. And so hopefully you get a lot of value that you need to be successful in your work uh, from this event. Mm -hmm.